Hey, this is Eric again, and now we're across the room uh, working on my actual chroma. Uh, and this is one that I acquired, uh, I guess, back in February? Was that when you were over here? Uh, February yeah, or March? So, yeah, earlier this year. Yeah, okay. Um, anyway, I was wanted to give you a quick peek through the back end of this thing. As I mentioned in, a, in an earlier part of the video, uh, this one had significant, significant battery acid and, as best I can tell, cat pee damage. Um, I mean, if you look in the you know, I can't tell how much of this is is battery acid that dripped down. That's that's remnants of battery acid junk, and how much of this is like more battery acid versus what looks like, you know, cat pee. I can't really tell. Um, at least a lot of battery acid damage. Yeah, look at all that, right? Ugh. Yeah. Yuck. Yuck. Yeah. Seriously, it stinks too. <laughs> um, so. <clears throat> So given the quick, I'll give you the super quick tour of this the same way I did with the working one. Um, this is the official SPSU uh, Chroma Switched Power Supply Upgrade. Switched Power Supply Upgrade, SPSU, uh, that, uh, that Luca ships from, from Italy. Um, he makes these little uh, daughter boards and you just plug stuff right into it and it drops in and it's great. Would highly recommend it. It also you also lose about 20 pounds worth of transformer weight in your chroma when you do this, and it generates a lot less heat than the original supply. So I have heard the original supply in mine was so gone that I didn't even boot it up. I just got rid of it and dropped this thing in first thing out of the chute. Okay, um, I don't know if you can see it from here. I'll pull up a little flashlight, but I had to replace almost all of the CMOS on this board. Um, I probably didn't have to replace all of it, but I thought, well, while I'm in here, I'm just going to do it. Um, some battery acid had dripped down here, and some of the uh, chips had started growing here. So I thought, well, uh, better safe than sorry. And so I went and socketed it all and, uh, and replaced that. And then on the back, uh, I put new electrolytics in there, just because it's a good idea and replaced the CMOS and the, uh, the final output op amps here. And I socketed the op amps because I wanted to be able to swap out with different ones. The original ones are 4558s, I think. And at the moment, I've got TLO-72s in here and I want to play with some even higher, um, some hi-fi ones just to see if it makes any difference in the sound. Um, so I socketed that stuff. Um, but this has had some, some uh, corrosion and oxidization and, and stuff around there so there's a lot of stuff going on this board that had to get uh, swapped out and like I said while I was at it I just went on and did the rest of it um, this is a replacement uh, voice card because as I mentioned in the other video um, the one that was in this position was so eaten up by the battery acid that had dripped down that it just was not salvageable I was able to get a couple of the, the spare uh, sort of obscure parts off of it, but it just, it was beyond help, so I I just tossed it, and luckily one of the other kind people on the uh, the Chroma Talk mailing list had a spare, and uh, so I purchased uh, purchased this from him and dropped it right in. On this machine, um, six, uh, besides, <laughs> well, I guess including the, the completely damaged board, six of the eight boards had major uh, major problems and were not functioning and uh, so it was a question of troubleshooting my way through that. Luckily again on the the Rhodes Chroma site and on the mailing list are some brilliant minds that have have written some routine some some techniques for troubleshooting these things fairly quickly. Um, so did that and then moving up to the stack switchboards here left side's fine Right side, again, battery acid damage. Uh, you probably can't, see, you might be able to see it past this, but that trace is completely eaten away. You can see the little bit of purple battery stuff there, and then this is just gone. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. So what I had to do was jumper it to another spot. It's ugly, but, uh, you know, but it works. And then the chip next to it had gotten completely eaten up, and those traces damaged, so I just hardwired that and replace that chip. Um, and if you look down on the actual switches, 
they're supposed to be clean and shiny like that, but you can see where acid acid dripped down there too. It dripped all over this one. Wow. Yeah, right? But um, amazingly enough, uh, again, it's that self-cleaning thing. After just pounding on that switch for a few hundred repetitions, it just came back to life. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's another one down here, same problem. You can see the, you see the acid on it. Yeah, sure. And again, I don't know if that's battery acid or, or, or cat pee or what, um, but whatever, some sort of funk. That's not factory. That's not factory, no, no. Uh, I'm not going to lift the front lid on this because I've already got it bolted in, but I, uh, there is a guy also on the, the chroma list that has reproduced the polyphonic aftertouch um, uh, 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 option that apparently only a few of these shipped with in the uh, back in the day but he using modern materials um it's a force sensing set of force sensing resistors and it sits right underneath this bar this is actually the original felt um you know from from up underneath and you flip the whole thing over and it takes up you know a similar amount of space but there's a whole i don't know if you will even be able to see it but there's a whole stack down there the pc board that runs the length of this thing that's got some foam on it and uh, in the back end of the weights pushes on that little uh, that PC board just a little bit. Actually, not the board, but the foam. Just in the corner of the weight pushes on it. Okay. And now you have polyphonic aftertouch because there's a sensor underneath every single key. It's great. We'll get into it in a second. And then all that gets uh, gets sent here. And then this gets gets multiplexed and sent back to the I.O. board. One brilliant thing when they designed this, as I said, it it had aftertouch already on the I.O. board ready to do, but most of the machines just didn't have it. And then the CC plus option when when uh, when they designed that had the firmware for the aftertouch stuff uh, baked into it. So that's all there. So I'm gonna put the lid back on this thing now that you've seen a bit of of what was involved, at least just physically trying to get it uh, happening again, um, and we'll make some noise.